All right, guys. We are in 2024 Subaru Forester Touring. Now we're gonna do our test drive. We're gonna drive about five minutes on the highway and uh, maybe five minutes around town. And let's see how this thing drives. Put it in drive. You can also put it in manual and use these paddle shifters. But we're not gonna do that. We're not in the GTR. One thing that is noticeable immediately is that how quiet this vehicle is. And I think Subaru did a great job with soundproofing. Oh, dinner anyone? For being only 180 horsepower, it's kind of peppy off the line. No issues keeping up or merging in traffic, you know, with normal traffic. One thing is also very noticeable is that uh, the tires, this Falcon tire, so I'm not really sure, maybe it's because uh, they're only 225 or because the sidewall is soft, but once you go and turn at, let's say, I don't know, 30, 40 miles an hour, let's say, um, you do have a little bit of floating. Um, that feeling is usually from the sidewall being kind of soft. But let's say right now we're driving and our MPGs at 50 miles an hour is let's say around 40. Not too bad. The field of view or you know the window is is huge. This is definitely, this is definitely something you have to get used to, especially if you don't have tinted windows. If this vehicle was mine, I would definitely tint the windows because I feel like I'm sitting in an aquarium. There's a, there's a bump on that road ahead, so let's see how it's going to take it. Very smooth, very smooth. Uh, this vehicle only has 100 miles on the clock, so, so far there's absolutely zero sounds, which is good. So all the panels seems like uh, very good quality. There's no creaks, there's no sounds, and uh, it, that's how it should be on a new car, but I know there's some new cars that even at, you know, there's gonna be 10 miles on the car, but it's gonna have freaking creaks and sounds. Which is very annoying. Oh, look at that Corvette. Nice. The Subaru drives well. I would say that this is definitely uh, a pretty good daily driver. And it's convenient because it's like, I can't really call this an SUV, but it's really, it's really like a, a little, station wagon that wants to be an SUV it just never grew up so it's like in the middle so convenient if you go snowboarding you can definitely put, put a bunch of stuff in the trunk uh, it's all-wheel drive so no issues with that and uh, reliability of Subarus is pretty good as long as you keep them stock but obviously this is a Forester why would you even modify a Forester but to each their own so easily this this vehicle you know with proper maintenance should be 200,000 mile plus and considering that this is a fully loaded model uh, one thing I did notice is that Subaru has a lot of safety features standard I mean I think it even tracks your eyes somehow because if you keep looking some other way it's gonna tell you uh, put your eyes back on the road, and this is a typical Honda over here Just going at his own pace I'll just merge at 20 miles an hour. Don't care, right? 
whatever, bro. One thing I forgot to mention during my uh, review when we were sitting in the car is this screen right here. If you will push this info button, hold it in and let it go, it will switch between different modes. Shows you your pitch and roll, shows you where the power is going, shows you acceleration percentage, shows you angle, and your eyesight. So the eyesight thing is the one that keeps track of your eyes if you are looking at the road or looking somewhere else. Next screen is going to show you local weather next screen is going to be some data from the navigation such as the local speed limit the route you're driving on and the direction such as north south or whatever audio is currently off basic uh, basic data for the vehicle so for example this vehicle has estimated 300 miles until empty uh, mixed MPGs right now is 24.9 and your current live MPGs that you're getting so right now it's showing that we're you know um, well the road is up and down so it goes between 20 and 40 next screen is clock and then if you want more info you can select whatever screens you want this one is whatever safety features are engaged so it's showing that everything is green meaning all of our safety features are in play right now so let's return back to the screen that shows all the data there you go We're gonna do a U-turn up ahead and we're gonna go on some local driving. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We're gonna have uh, a lot more car reviews. I'm um, not really sure if I should be talking or it should be staying silent during a drive. You guys let me know in the comments because I kind of don't mind having conversations but I feel like I am talking to myself just speaking my thoughts but uh, you guys let me know I don't really plan on what I'm gonna say I don't really plan on anything in this videos I just uh, get in and drive and talk about what I see The turn signal sound is not annoying like in some other brands where the way it clicks is just like oh my god shut up so this is uh this is not bad the steering wheel steering wheel is, is pretty good i do like the fact that it's not um it's not huge i would do like the fact that it's not uh, super soft so this feels like the leather is actually not gonna wear out too fast because for example in jeeps the leather is not grainy but it's more like a smooth leather and it kind of wears out quick like in a jeep grand cherokee for example where i've been in grand cherokees with you know 30,000 miles and the steering wheel is already worn so i feel like this is gonna last longer 
from point A to point B or regular whatever vehicle like Universal it's not bad and as you can see we merged uh, we merged pretty decent no issues with keeping up with uh, traffic which actually surprised me uh, because I mean 180 horsepower is not a lot oh uh, one more thing on the steering wheel uh, I do like these controls so for example heated steering wheel is right here so this button under so I do feel like I mean this is a Forester but I feel like I'm sitting in a GTR meaning you have all these extra screens you have this uh, well laid out you have the steering wheel with paddle shifters you have these grip knobs over here and the steering wheel controls are there you have some under the steering wheel which is which makes it feel like you're in a sports car um, so there's two modes I and S I mode is intelligent mode and S mode is SI drive so like sports mode uh, it shows you a different curve I assume the engine programming gives you more torque immediately versus an intelligent mode where it decides on the way you drive. So we're going to switch it back to intelligent mode so it has a smoother curve line and uh, like an eco or whatever mode. I assume it's more for MPG and uh, sport mode ups your RPM and holds your RPM at a higher uh, level longer. So pretty much right now, let's say if we switch to uh, sport mode, our RPMs are, let's say, 1800 at 53 miles, 55 miles an hour, let's say, at 1900 now. And if we, at the same speed, switch it to intelligent mode, the RPM goes to 1500 and below. There it goes, dropping. So, yeah, that's, that's the difference. not too bad uh, right now this vehicle as I mentioned before only has 100 miles on it so this is a brand new vehicle that we were able to test drive uh, but this vehicle has 25 miles per gallon average city and highway so not so bad I feel like after the break-in uh, the vehicle's owner is gonna like uh, the fuel consumption on it it should definitely be as stated by the manufacturer or better. And then it's surprisingly quiet, like very quiet. I, uh, I like it. Also, one thing, the seats are very comfortable. Like for example, my brother has a Tesla Model Y, about the same size. But Model Y seats in the back are not wide enough. Like the back, the backrest is not wide enough. And uh, I feel like it's narrow because the seats are from Model 3. But in this Subi, you have seats that are comfortable. Even for somebody, you know, I'm um, six foot three, about 247 pounds. Um, and uh, I'm comfortable. I do wish the seat will go down more as I prefer the position where I'm down more instead of sitting like on a chair. Oh, there's another forcer. But um, I guess it's just something to get used to if you know, you're know you getting this vehicle, I guess within a week, you know, I, I don't see it as an issue. But I do like uh, the bolstering on the seats and um, the fact that it's holding you in place and uh, the seat is comfortable I do wish the bottom portion was a little bit longer uh, or it will have like a lump you know like the support for your quads I'm not sure what you call that feature in some cars but I call it like hamstring support not quads I'm sorry quads are in the front so that will be hamstring supports um, but again you can't have it all right so let's let's go on the local streets and let's see how this vehicle does locally i'm also
also gonna do like a night drive I want to show you guys how cool these headlights are because as I mentioned uh, on the walk around the headlights they turn with you turning your steering wheel so that's pretty cool and we just went over a couple of bumps it took them like a champ like and the vehicle did not lose its position it didn't wobble um, it held pretty well and it's very smooth very smooth absolutely no complaints I also do like the analog gauges you do have a digital screen in the middle you can um, you know have it selected as showing your speed uh, tire pressure your basic vehicle functions so uh, I keep it on uh, the speed for for the owner because that's what he had her on so we're gonna keep it in the same this Range Rover looking like a spaceship let's see sun visor Time to go. There's some bumps. Yep, very smooth. Brakes are pretty good. No complaints about the brake feel. Uh, they start off. They start off at a good percentage. Like on some vehicles, uh, the brakes will start off soft, and uh, and you feel like more engaging right as you push the pedal. Uh, and on some vehicles, the brakes are so touchy that as soon as you touch them, you're you're you know freaking uh feels like you're gonna put your face in the windshield uh but not in this vehicle i feel like they developed a pretty good balance so uh or on some vehicles like for example i didn't drive the new grand cherokee yet i drove the previous grand cherokee like let's say 2020 2021 and i feel like standard brakes in those vehicles are underpowered basically you feel a lot of um, you feel a lot of body weight of the car moving forward once you push the brakes and you have to kind of push them a little bit harder to achieve the result that you desire but in this car um, probably because it also doesn't weight as much as a Grand Cherokee but the brakes feel much better in this vehicle The pedal feel is, is not bad. There you go, we specifically went on this road uh, just so we can uh, kind of feel some bumps because uh, this is a crappy road. Uh, not as bad as New York City, but not the best. So you do have the auto start, auto stop function and you can disable it over here. So right now, we have it enabled, and you can disable it. So every time you come to a stop, which is to me is very annoying, and I don't think it's good for the car, because the most wear and tear happens when you start the vehicle, right? So I always like to shut this off on any car that I drive.
comfortable. The seats are very, very comfortable. That's one thing that I was surprised is that uh, you know it's not a it's not an STI or WRX, um, but the seats the seats are comfortable. I feel like Subaru did a good job with the seats, and overall with the vehicle, the way it feels, uh, the way it drives, not bad. Like I don't feel like I'm on a freaking sucker mom looking Subaru. I feel like I'm actually in a sedan, which is uh, pretty pretty good. Like I don't feel that I'm on a retirement. Uh, I don't feel like I'm on a car for like retired people, basically. So I wouldn't mind driving this. Not a not a not an issue. You know who cares? There's only two people in the world that care about what kind of car you drive. It's you and the gold digger. That's it. No one else gives a flying F. What's this? Oh, there's a Subi. Yeah, bro. Open my windows. Everybody look at me. I got an exhaust. Today is a beautiful day. 60 degrees. So everyone's out. Everyone. I also want to do a 0 to 60 tests um, with drag. I have a draggy. But I'll uh, check back with this car when it has, you know, over a thousand miles on it. And then we're going to be doing 0 to 60. Although I don't think it's a problem these days, you know, this is not 1987 where you have to wait 5,000 miles for an engine to be broken in so you can floor it. And also I know some engine builders believe that you should uh, floor, you know, give it a couple times, not obviously floor it every single time you drive, but a couple times uh, to go through high RPM for a better break and intolerances of the engine parts. Comfortable, like we've been, let's say, driving in traffic, uh, very comfortable. No issues at all. Like in my brother's Tesla Model Y, for example, I don't know, I feel like if I was to drive the Model Y for, let's say, I don't know, a thousand miles, I feel like I will have to, every hundred miles or so, like, after a while, stop and uh, rest because the seat is uh, kind of small. But in this car, I feel like uh, it'll be perfect for a longer drive. Obviously not perfect because for longer drives, I think the perfect cars are like pickup trucks um, or like a larger SUV, but uh, this wouldn't be too bad. This would not be too bad at all. It's quiet, it's comfortable. I would say it is luxurious, to be honest with you. Just the materials, very soft, like especially leather. I really like the feel of it. Even these materials, you know, the plastic, this rubberish plastic, it doesn't feel as rubberish over here, but it definitely feels rubber over here. So I'm not sure if it's a different material and they, I see it tells me, slow down, bro. And it's kind of leather over here. So either soft touch plastic or this is leather, I'm not sure. It kind of feels the same. And you do have a memory seat function over here. Weird position, but it's there. Damn, the park is full, bro. Look at this madness. Look at this madness getting out of the park. Holy smokes. Oh no, they're parked. There's like zero parking. Shh. Annoying. 
I feel like this test drive is way longer than I expected. So, one thing I wanted to ask for people that are gonna watch this video is, are my videos too long? Should I limit it to 15 minutes and talk less and just stay silent? Or is this length of the video okay? I'm not really sure if people prefer uh, shorter videos or longer videos. Honestly, I have no idea. Uh, but I feel like it's very hard to talk about the car and then drive the car and be under 15 minutes or even under half an hour. Um, well, unless we make the test drives a lot shorter and not say anything during the test drives. So we're pretty much done with our test driving. Drove around town, drove on the highway, talk about the car, talk about other cars. So we're pretty much done, guys. Oh, there was a Ferrari by somebody's house. And that's nice. Come on this guy running a fucking red light. Excuse my language. So. All right, guys, we have concluded our drive. We're gonna uh, pull into this parking lot and do our outro and be done and return this vehicle to its rightful owner. Let's see. Oh, look at this Jeep Wrangler. Oh, I never knew there was a little track over here. I thought it was just library. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching the video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me grow and Drop me a comment. Let me know Let me know if I'm doing a good job on the video or what I can improve on. There's always something to learn Now I got to finish drinking my pre-workout and hit the gym All right guys subscribe to my channel again. I'll see you in the next one Hopefully you enjoy this video Stop recording <laughs>